morning, my Eastern Baptist Church family, and welcome to the 58th edition of our Words for the Moment. As you know by now, uh, we're utilizing our Words for the Moment as a way to provide encouragement to our family and friends, not only in the area of Suffolk, but all over the world. So we thank God for you joining us for the short seven to, to 10 minutes to just hear a word from the Lord. And I know, don't know about you, as we go out through our week and through our daily routine, uh, it's always good to hear what God has to say. As we've done on the last previous uh, Thursdays for our words on of the moment, we are using our Thursdays as a platform to review our Bible studies that we have on Wednesday night. And once again, I would invite you to become a part of our uh, Bible study as we are going through an eight week uh, session on the topic redemption. And so we are now uh, just completed our fourth week and we have turned a corner. And so we just thank God for those of you that have participated over the last uh, four weeks. We meet on Wednesdays at 6.30. And so if you're interested in joining us for our weekly Bible studies on Wednesday at 6.30, you can email us at office at the East End Baptist Church com, And we'll make sure, <coughs> excuse me, that we send you the Zoom link so that you can join us. I just thank God for uh, you being here uh, with us. And we just pray and hope that what we're able to share to you would be of uh, use to you as you continue the journey uh, through this life and as we enter into uh, these winter months and as we enter into this political season. Uh, as we think about our Bible study on last night, it was on the tail end of the uh, presidential debate that you saw on Tuesday night. And so what we wanted to do is put this idea of redemption into our current context. And so uh, Wednesday's uh, lesson, last night's lesson, was coming from the book of Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 6 through 14. And the title of this uh, devotional study was, Why Does the Lord Redeem? Why Does the Lord Redeem? Uh, but before we got into the passage of scripture, and before we got into the lesson, we actually reflected back on last week's lesson where we began to talk about and really reflect on that moment, that moment uh, in which uh, the Lord redeemed us. And so we spent a few moments just kind of reflecting, just kind of reflecting. And I will ask that you would do that as well, just reflecting on that moment when you met Christ, reflect on that moment when you met Jesus. And if you not, you have not have had that moment, I invite you to bring Christ into your life so you can experience that moment. And so one of the questions that we ask as we uh, thought about that particular moment, we asked everyone that if, if, if you uh, could put a word with that moment, what would that word be? And so many of us who was part of the session on last night began to share words that have come to our minds like peace and love and so on and so forth, joy. Uh, and all the other accolades as it relates to that particular moment. And then we ask the question, what specific reason do you believe God redeemed you? In other words, just kind of helping us to realize that there is a purpose to God's redemption. So that's how the, the Bible study started out as we began to talk about what, why does God redeem? And we also spoke about redemption in light of the debate that had taken place on the previous night. But coming from Deuteronomy chapter 7, Verses 6 to 14, you'll find these words. For you are a people holy to the Lord your God. The Lord your God has chosen you out of all the peoples on the face of the earth to be his people, his treasured possession. The Lord did not set his affection on you or choose you because you were numerous than other people, for you were the fewest of all peoples. But it was because the Lord loved you and kept the oath he swore to your ancestors that he brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you from the land of slavery, from the power of Pharaoh's king of Egypt. Know therefore that the Lord your God is God. He is the faithful God, keeping his covenant of love to a thousand generations of those who love him and keep his commandments. 
but those who hate him, he will repay to their face by destruction. He will not be slow to repay to their face those who hate him. Therefore, take care to follow the commands, decrees, and laws I give you today. Verse 12 says, if you pay attention to these laws and be careful to follow them, then the Lord your God will keep his covenant of love with you as he swore to your ancestors. He will love you and bless you and increase your numbers. He will bless the fruit of your womb, the crop of your land, your grain, your new wine, your olive oil, the calves of your uh, herds, the lambs of your flock in the land he swore to your ancestors to give you. You will be blessed more than any other people. None of your men or women will be childless, nor will any of your livestock be without young. And so as we listen to God talking to the children of Israel, one of the things we dealt with last night as, as it relates to why does the Lord redeem, we began to uh, relate uh, to the, the, the journey and to the life and to the experience of the children of Israel and compared it to the life and the experience of people of African descent, especially those who uh, our ancestors was transported from the continent of Africa and brought over into slavery, slavery here in, in America. And so we talked about the mighty hand of God and how God not only redeemed the children of Israel, but God also redeemed us as a people. But one of the questions that really came to the forefront one of the things that really was a highlight on, on last evening came from verse six, where it says that the Lord, your God has chosen you out of your, out of the people on the face of the earth to be his people, his treasured possession. So we asked the question, according to this particular verse, why did God, the Lord redeem the children of Israel? And what we discovered is, is that the Lord redeemed the children of Israel because he wanted the children of Israel to be his treasured possession. He wanted the children of Israel to be his treasured possession. So we asked the question, do we believe that God's purpose for redemption is still the same today or has it changed? And most of us, uh, by our majority response, said that we believe that God is still doing the same thing today, that he wants us to be his treasured possession. And so as we studied last night, we discovered that in the Hebrew sense, this idea of being God's treasured possession means that we are God's jewel, J-E-W-E-L. We are a jewel to God. And so we asked the question, so if, 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 if we believe that we are a jewel to God, if we had a precious jewel, what are the three things that would we do with our jewel? And so some of the responses was, we said that we will hold our jewel up and we would admire our jewel. Uh, another person said, what we would do, we would make sure that our jewel is always clean and shiny and that there is no defects in it. Another person said, what I would do with my jewel, I would make sure that it stays safe, that it was protected. And so we discovered is just like we do with our precious jewel, since we are a treasured pressure, uh, possession of God, that God treats us as his precious jewel. God lifts us up and admires us. God makes sure that we are clean and that we are precious in his sight. And God makes sure that as long as we are in his hand, that we are protected, that we are there for safe keeping. And so we just thank God for uh, this word that he brought us on last night, helping us to know that we are jewels of God. And so we talked about the idea that evangelism is the fact that God is on a treasure hunt. In other words, God is always looking for jewels here on earth. God is looking for, for people who are willing to accept him as Lord and Savior. So if you have confessed with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord, just know that you are precious in God's sight, that you are his treasured possession, that you are a jewel. No matter what anybody else might think, just let just know that God is admiring you for who you are. God is making sure that you are protected. God is making sure that you uh, have been cleaned up and removing the flaws from your life. So we thank God for this for this uh, 
lesson as we discuss why does the Lord redeem and we just thank God for us being his treasured possession. I hope and pray that this has been words of encouragement uh, to you and for you. And we thank all of those who joined us last night for our study small group. And we look forward to seeing you on next Wednesday at 630. Thank you for joining us today. And we'll see you very, very soon. God bless.